This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. As we turn to look at the FBI raiding several properties in late July in St. Louis, Missouri, and St. Petersburg, Florida, tied to the African People's Socialist Party, which leads the Uhuru movement, the Pan Africanist group has been a longtime advocate for reparations for slavery, a vocal critic of U.S. foreign policy. The raids came as the Justice Department indicted a Russian man living overseas named Alexander Yanov, uh, using U.S.-based group, groups to spread Russian propaganda. The groups were not named in the indictment, but reportedly include the African People's Socialist Party. One of the FBI raids targeted the home of Amali Eshetela, the founder of the African People's Socialist Party. He accused the FBI of targeting his group for their political work. He's joining us now from St. Louis. Amali, welcome back to Democracy Now! We actually spoke to you first in about a half a, about a quarter of a century ago, in 1996, when Democracy Now! just began. Can you, though, go back to the end of July and talk about what happened? Talk about that day of the raid, where were you? My wife and I were um, awake. We were sitting at the dining room table discussing how we're going to be moving for the day. She uh, is responsible for, has organized a doula program to train African women, uh, young women, uh, uh, in becoming doulas. Uh, and this is in a city where, uh, in the first year of life, uh, enough black babies die. Uh, to fill uh, 15 kindergarten classes every year. So we, we were talking about that, and I literally actually was preparing to go to the gym. And then uh, we heard this loud racket outside, this noise uh, from loudspeakers de demanding the, that the residents of this property should come out with our hands up <clears throat> and nothing in our hands. And, uh, and, and as, as this was being said, uh, a loud uh, flashbang grenades uh, were exploding uh, all around the house, and I was later to learn uh, in the back stairwell of the house. So uh, I asked her to allow me to leave first and to get on the phone to call people to let them know that we were being raided. And uh, she tried, but uh, was unable to do it because they had jammed our phones. Uh, so I went down the stairwell, and uh, when I got uh, to the bottom of the stairwell, uh, these uh, laser dots uh, from uh, automatic weapons were bouncing off my chest, and uh, I heard these commands to move toward them, to, toward the light. There was a large armored vehicle uh, in front of my house. There were uh, camouflage-clad uh, troopers, uh, FBI agents, and I don't know who else, uh, with flag jackets and uh, automatic weapons. My wife uh, followed me down, and on her way down, uh, a drone went past her head going up the stairwell into the house. Uh, so I went outside <coughs> and uh, was uh, zip-tied um, the, at the sides of the house. Uh, there were—I don't know how many FBI agents there were, uh, but there were a lot of them and a lot of different vehicles. Uh, and my wife came downstairs. She was handcuffed behind her back. And I'm asking them why, what's, what's going on. Uh, they uh, said that uh, they had a search warrant uh, for, for my house, and I asked them to see the search warrant. And uh, they uh, conveniently didn't have it on them, uh, but it was somewhere uh, in the vicinity, and they'd get it. Uh, uh, we were uh, told to sit on the curb, which we didn't comply with. And they said, well, you can sit uh, in the back seat of the car. And we saying, I don't want to sit anywhere. I want to leave. That uh, <clears throat> I don't even want you here. I don't want to be here with you. Uh, they said, uh, again, why, why are you here? Why are you uh, attacking this house? Uh, they took my cell phone. They said that they were there because later that morning, there was going to be an indictment uh, out of Tampa, Florida, against a Russian national. And should he ever come to the United States, he would be arrested. Uh, that somehow my name was involved in this indictment. Uh, and uh, so that was the basis they gave for, for the arrest. I didn't know it at the time. Uh, but uh, across town, and uh, uh, one of our offices was being attacked. This was an office of the African People's Solidarity Committee. Uh, and they used battering rams to go into that house, uh, into that center, 
Uh, and upstairs, uh, there were two residents. Uh, these were white people who uh, were also handcuffed uh, at gunpoint. <clears throat> they had already knocked out the windows <clears throat> in, in the house, in my house. They had, uh, they had uh, knocked the door, some doors loose from the hinges. Uh, they had come through the back stairwell, as I mentioned, they used flashbang grenades in the rear of my house, uh, plaster all over everything. Uh, and in St. Petersburg, Florida, 27 days after they had done uh, what appears to us now to have been a test run uh, with, uh, on July 2nd, uh, with uh, someone pulling into the parking lot in broad daylight and from his trunk, uh, trunk, car trunk, pulling us, uh, a military-grade flamethrower to torch the 15 by 25-foot red, black, and green flag that uh, was on this 50-foot flag flagpole, uh, and, and this had occurred. FBI, eight, Homeland Security, local police came out. Uh, they refused to charge the guy with anything except uh, um, uh, some kind of misdemeanor mischief. Uh, they refused to characterize it as arson. And uh, so it's upon uh, trying to understand that uh, initially um, it clearly uh, suggested to us that it was not just some casual guy who just happened to have a flamethrower in, in his trunk uh, who didn't like us, who did this, but, uh, but that the state was somehow involved. And then 27 days later, as I mentioned, they would attack uh, that same building, uh, the same building, by the way, that you referenced, uh, where we came under attack in 1996, with 300 uh, local uh, county, state, uh, uh, and uh, federal uh, forces. Uh, so it's the same building, and this time they didn't say anything about Russians or indictments. In fact, nobody was arrested. They used all the tear gas at that time that they had in the city of St. Petersburg against us. So clearly, uh, you know, we've been in t targeted. They, they stole uh, cell phones, they stole laptops, they stole iPads, uh, they stole uh, like something like 40 years of archives that we have in that building in St. Petersburg, Florida, of, our, of the history of our movement, of our party. Uh, and the struggle uh, there in St. Petersburg. And uh, they also uh, detained, they went to the residence of uh, Akilia Nai, who's a young woman who oversees uh, most of our uh, communications work. Uh, and <clears throat> they told her a lie that someone was breaking into her car to draw her outside of the house. And then at that time, they forced their way into her car uh, uh, as she opened it to check the car. They stole her cell phone, and uh, she is one of those persons who's also a so-called unindicted co-conspirator, along with me, uh, Penny Hess, uh, uh, Jesse Neville. Uh, and uh, so, you know, we're waiting for the other shoe to drop. Well, Molly, this is an astounding story. I mean, here we uh, the for those of us who are familiar with the radical movement in black and brown communities in the United States, the African People's Socialist Party has been in existence for more than 40 years. It's it it's part of it arose out of the black community and is one of the few organizations that has consistently maintained a uh, an anti-capitalist uh, and a socialist and internationalist perspective. Perspective, and now suddenly you're being accused of being uh, uh, pawns of the of the Russian government. Can, uh, can, what can, what sense can you make of this uh, of this attack? I think that what we are experiencing, and by the way, this is uh, the fifth May was fifth years of existence for the African People's Socialist Party. But you're right, we came out of I was a SNCC organizer. We came out of the whole civil rights movement, and I think that we're. Ex uh, uh, dealing with the fact that the United States is facing an existential crisis of sorts, the whole social system is, <clears throat> where it was this uncontested hegemon for the longest period of time. Uh, it is now uh, being perceived by much of the world, and I think rightly so, uh, as a force that's losing its grip uh, on the world. And, you know, having suffered military defeat in Afghanistan, having suffered humiliation uh, in Saudi Arabia, that uh, the, the country that uh, Biden had to ta said he was going to turn into some kind of pariah and then have him to find himself slinking over, uh, slithering over, I should say, fist bumping uh, the prince. Uh, I just think it's an existential crisis, and the African People's Socialist Party, 
uh, I want to invite you uh, and, and all of your listeners to come and see the work that we're doing in St. Louis. We've transformed an entire most oppressed African community. When they came to get us uh, at our house, uh, they came to Red Bud, 44 Bud, as it's referred to. It's the most depressed, uh, economically depressed, uh, uh, politically neglected uh, uh, place in St. Louis. And we've transformed uh, uh, much of that. Uh, our party has done in pulling the people into actual uh, active uh, political work to, to change that community. We brought basketball courts where there were none. We built it ourselves. No city government, no help. We've initiated a doula program where 20 young African women uh, have just recently, even as we were being uh, attacked, this was happening there. We've, we've created uh, 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 programs that for African men and women who are leaving prison, the workforce program, the opening, uh, we bought properties where we uh, opening a bakery cafe uh, to train uh, people coming out of prisons and culinary arts and things like this. We bought properties to house them once they get out. So. Uh, this is our work. And, and when I say it's our work, I mean, the work we've been doing for, for 50 years as a party and that I've been doing for nearly 60 years is about the liberation of black people. I want to be clear on that. And the government is clear on that. They use Russia. They use uh, this nonsense, uh, even at a time when we've seen white people scaling the walls of the Capitol, threatening to kill the vice president, the feet on the, on the desk of Nancy Pelosi. And you talk about, we have some role under the Russians of contaminating the pristine elections that happen in this country. And I'm right now in a state where the guy who's running for Senate uh, one of his most uh, controversial, if you will, campaign advertisements or uh, 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 videos uh, has him smashing through a door, just like the FBI smashed through our doors, uh, uh, having uh, with camouflage carrying people, flashbang grenades, and him stepping in with an automatic weapon saying that he's going rhino hunting. We in the African People's Socialist Party are contaminating and undermining elections in this country. We are responsible for uh, discrediting the United States uh, around the world. That's the most ridiculous, asinine issue. But we, the African People's Socialist Party, we are busy all over the world. We have po actual political organizations in South Africa, throughout the Caribbean, in West Africa. We are there uh, uh, in, in the slums, in, in, in places like Everton. Uh, uh, township uh, in Houtung in, in South Africa and various places like that. So, so we are a problem. Uh, we are throughout the Caribbean as an organization. And uh, the United States has identified, uh, obviously, three strategic enemies. And one of them clearly uh, is Russia. The other is China that is dealing with right now. Very dangerous, very tense, uh, uh, serious situation. And Africa is one. That's why you got, for the first time in the 246-year history of the United States Marines, they've created, they put forth their first uh, four-star black general. And they've given him the job of presiding over Africa Command, the, uh, the organization from the United States military to control, contain Africa. Uh, that finds itself, uh, it says, in a contest with Russia and China in Africa, and of course with black people in Africa. That's why you have the first uh, black uh, secretary of uh, defense, they call him, uh, in his history. So Africa is, a, is, a, is an enemy. And black people, if you remember, 1969, the FBI declared that the Black Panther Party uh, was the greatest threat to the internal security of the United States. And it was an organization dealing in international affairs, and it didn't have the kind of organizational presence that we have throughout the African world. So that's why we came under attack. It's an attack on the right of black people. It's an attack on, on our struggle uh, for the absolute total uh, liberation of all, every inch, square inch of Africa and its unification along with the African peoples around the world in solidarity with oppressed and colonized people elsewhere. And, Omali, you mentioned that, that uh, Russia identified as a, a, a prime enemy of the United States. Uh, what do you know about this guy, Alexander I Ionov, the one who supposedly you are unindicted co-conspirators with, and, and these allegations that he's been spawning, he and others have been spawning uh, dissident movements within the United States? You know, I don't know uh, if the Russians are spawning dissident movements in the United States. I don't know the African People's Socialist Party, as you mentioned earlier, we're 50, we 50 years old. We're on the same trajectory we've always been. And I find it extremely problematic for this suggestion that somehow 
uh, the Russians, we needed the Russians to tell us. You know, it's, it fits into the whole narrative about colonized people and black people being too stupid to see our own future and control our own affairs, that we need somebody to come and tell us that, that, that America's treating us bad. George Floyd didn't happen. It wasn't the murder of Mike Brown uh, that brought uh, the African People's Socialist Party into Ferguson, St. Louis, that somehow the Russians had something to do with this asinine. And I, I, there's some things I will not talk about just in terms of still pulling together uh, legal forces to deal with this, because they've stolen. So the people mentioned, uh, and they mentioned that they took laptops and cell phones uh, and, and other devices like that, but they took a lot more. They took years and years of communications with various people that we've had around the world and throughout this country. They've got texts, they've got emails, they've constructing uh, some narrative that will defend what it is they've done. They've created, they created a political offense against us, and then they're using the law. They're constructing uh, a, a case using the law uh, to punish us for, for what they uh, cannot characterize as a political crime. And the political criminal in this instance is the United States government. So I won't say too much, you know, uh, about that aspect of it, except to say that it's a bogus charge. It's a ridiculous charge. And anybody can see our history. Uh, this, they, there's a assumption that somehow somebody paid us to say something about, refer about uh, genocide against African people. 1950s, black people went to the United Nations charging genocide. 1982, we held a, con a, a first tribunal that ever happened in the world on reparations of black people in this country, a world tribunal with international jurors playing, playing a role in this. And we based it on international law. And one of the, uh, uh, the international law, one aspect of that was the, uh, the UN Convention on the Punishment of uh, Prevention and Punishment the crime of genocide. We did that. And, and uh, this was at a time that the United States and had not even uh, ratified uh, and Amali, the Genocide Convention. Amali, just to be clear, you haven't been charged with anything, right? I mean, they raided your house, they <laughs> handcuffed you and your wife, um, they used flashbang grenades, but you weren't charged with anything. We haven't charged, been charged yet. Uh, I, I, we expect uh, indictment. We expect uh, also an attempt to separate uh, people from these incredible programs that we've been doing. And but much of this has been, by the way, uh, facilitated by white people who voluntarily pay reparations to the African community through us. I mean, we have 130-some-odd organizations, organizers in, uh, that is to say, 130 cities uh, that this white organization under our leadership is functioning in 30 states. So they haven't charged us yet. Uh, but that's the thing hanging over our heads. And we are convinced that part of this also uh, is to represent threat, terrorize people. You can't communicate with us because the FBI is going to get your information. And to keep people from pro uh, supporting the programs that we're doing. And now we have to spend money uh, buying uh, communications uh, capacity, you know, videos and, 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 and laptops and things like that, and to get lawyers. Because uh, this thing about unindicted co-conspirators uh, provides them an opportunity any time they want to uh, to uh, to file these charges, and we expect indictments to come. And we expect. Uh, you, uh, yeah, if you ahead. wouldn't mind your age, Amali. I'm 80. I'll be 80. I'm 81. I'll be 81 in October. We just have 30 seconds, but can you respond to the raid on Mar-a-Lago? Some of your um, properties in St. Petersburg were also raided, also in Florida. Yeah, I, I haven't heard a single—anything uh, about a flashbang grenade going off at Trump's place. I haven't heard any flashbang grenades going off and any of those people climbing the walls of the Capitol. And the fact is that uh, the FBI is being used as political instruments, and certainly that's happened with us. And I can't speak to uh, the, the former president of the United States except to say that there's an obvious contest that's happening, happening between different sectors of the colonial ruling class in this country. And they would, if they could, lump us into their beef, their struggle. But uh, we are fighting for the liberation of black people, the unification, liberation of Africa, and well, we ain't going to stop. Amali we want to thank you for being with us, chairman of the African People's Socialist Party, uh, located in St. Louis, Missouri, set up there um, after, well, it was eight years ago yesterday when Michael Brown was killed by police.
This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org. When we come back, an update on how the Biden administration says it's officially ending the Trump era at Remain in Mexico policy. Also, how many children are still separated from their parents, separated by the Trump administration? Stay with us.